I now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Barra, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the ranking member. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan, for, for your service to, to our country and your service at Net NOAA. Um, I often hear my colleagues say, well, you know, they can't determine whether the climate's changing or not because they're not scientists. Now, I'm a, a physician by training. I am a scientist, not a climate scientist, but certainly trained in the scientific method and how you collect data. And at the surface, if we just think about it, um, 2015 was the hottest year on record by quite a bit. You know, that's just objective data. And folks may say, well, that's not a trend. But 2014 was the second most um, hottest year um, on date. Again, objective data. 2010 was the third hottest year on record in recent memory. 2013, or 2013 was the fourth. So, you know, as a trend, you know, it doesn't take a scientist to realize that the climate's changing and we are experiencing, uh, you know, record heat wave after record heat wave. Let's drill that down to what it means to the, the people. You know, in my own district um, in California and to our state, we're going through severe drought-like conditions that are impacting everyone, you know, from our farmers to our consumers. Um, everyone's chipping in. In my own district, Folsom Lake, which serves uh, you know, uh, close to half a million people in my, my community, um, rely on Folsom Lake for drinking water, for surface drinking water. It's been at record lows. And yes, we are having um, a, a wetter winter. Um, we are having um, some snow. But what we realize, you know, over the last four or five years is when we look up at the Sierra Nevadas, our snowpack has been um, disappearing. And much of that precipitation, when we get it, is coming down as rain, not as snow. This is a, a, a crisis situation. In my district, we rely on Folsom Lake and Folsom Dam to help manage both flood risk as well as drought risk. And as we go through a joint federal project that will give us much more flexibility to manage both these conditions, weather forecasting becomes increasingly important. And um, the investments NOAA is making in better forecasting so we can better manage um, our water in the lake, knowing when we need to increase flows to create more capacity as, to, as also when we should hold back on water knowing that um, you know, those storms aren't coming. So I appreciate the work you're doing. I was reading about the Cray supercomputer and just managing the big data and all the points of data. And I'd be curious about um, the Cray supercomputer as well as other resources that NOAA can, has to help us better predict and forecast weather. Thank you very much for that question, Mr. Rowe. The, um, the supercomputing is indispensable to this work, as you can imagine. You have to measure the entire globe and ingest the data and then run the calculations that let us have the kind of foresight that you're speaking about. Uh, one of the exciting uh, projects to me, uh, pr very specific to your interests, is something called forecast-informed reservoir operations, which our weather service with our research teams and our fisheries teams, actually, are pioneering out in the Russian river basis for just the reason you said. If we can tell a dam manager with the Corps of Engineers there's not some more rain coming for at least X amount of time, uh, then they could hold the water that comes in a wave in an atmospheric river instead of uh, letting water go downstream to make room in the reservoir. Uh, that has great potential to help add some precision and some, some greater margin to the water management in your state. Thank you. And um, anything we can do to help better manage that, provide the funding, make sure when we're writing the manuals that help us manage um, these reservoirs, we're not relying on data from 30 years ago or 40 years ago. We're relying on the instruments that we have today, the tools that we have today. And again, in a state like mine, in a region like mine, where we have the dual risk of both flood and um, droughts, we have to have those tools. So I, we very much appreciate the the work that NOAA is doing. We want to make sure as we update the manual for Folsom Lake and, and the management of Folsom Dam, we incorporate all that data and the forecasting data. And, you know, again, from my perspective, this is a reality that we'll have to deal with. The climate is changing. Managing these resources has um, incredible impact on individual lives, on our economy. And the more we can recognize that, the quicker we can recognize that the climate's changing. And we've got to, to manage this um, life-saving um, asset in water 
Um, the sooner we do that, the better off we'll be. So thank you for your work. Thank you. I'll yield back.